Right, I'm live. I think. Make sure that I'm live. Everybody, sound. Or do I sound okay to everybody on uh, the other end? Let me know. Otherwise, I think we're gonna get into it. I don't remember quite where we were at, but we'll find out. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Quiet Gentleman Entertainment. I could be louder. Mm. I'm not sure if that actually improves anything, but that's a thing I can do. I can turn on my gain a little bit, too. We'll see if, how badly that goes when Duke starts screaming about whatever he wants to scream about. Uh, so welcome to our channel. It's our, our regular crew here, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to double-check that. Hey, we got Dorkistan here, though. Uh, he's not part of our regular crew, and we're glad he's here, or they're here. Um, thanks for coming out. Uh, tonight we're of course going to be doing Tomes of Isolation, uh, Night or Vampire the Masquerade Night Road. Uh, this is from Choice by Games, uh, and written by Carl Marquis, who is still working on this. Uh, he still has other venue or other avenues to get to put into it. That's that's what it says. Yeah. Um, well, hello. See, we're excited you're here. Um, so there's a there's a lot going on in in this, but uh, I know it's still a, an, a work in progress. There is DLC that we do not have, and oh shoot, I clicked the wrong thing. There we go. Um, there's some DLC that we do not have for other clans, so we haven't got there that gotten that yet. Well, I'm glad that we actually know each other. That's awesome. So, I'm going to get right into it. I'll let you guys hang out in the chat. If you have quite, or, uh, So, if you haven't been out for this, for Tomes of Isolation before, um, this is uh, kind of audience participation. So, when we have choices to make, we'll kind of make them together, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to go through my character real quick, because I don't remember what happened last week. I was tired. I'm still tired. Uh, my hunger's a little high. My humanity's coming down. I got a whole masquerade violation. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, we're doing okay. Let's check our inventory. Um, we got some cash. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I do remember helping Dr. Call, I just don't remember the details. I remember there were hunters, maybe, as well. Um, I don't know, I'm just tired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, looks like we still have our BMW. It looks like it hasn't been damaged. I don't know why getting it worked on is one of the things. Anyway, you shake off these strange notions of survival at any cost and drag yourself out of sleep. You're not in North Africa during the Great War. You're not Ayla. Ayla is dead and gone. You're Ransom, and the sun has just set. You have work to do. Where to tonight? Yeah, I got paid a lot, so um, here we go. I'm worried about the masquerade. Specifically, I fear that my haven will be discovered and I'll be destroyed. What can I do to avoid attention? Uh, that one's not such a bad idea. Uh, go to the Covenant Pawn Shop to buy some more stuff. I find a used car dealership to look at better cars. I'm good. Find a mechanic to repair my BMW. I don't know that we need that. Um, I look for a real estate office so I don't have to live in a parking garage. There's always that. I need a place where I can hone my mental abilities like a library or a bookstore. I need a place for honing my physical abilities like a gym. I go to the Viper. I stay in my parking garage to unlock further secrets of the blood. Maybe. Uh, I spend some money and acquire some blood. I pick up the parcel for Ellen, uh, Olive Corona, and take off to Camp Scheffler. Um, I would like to hone at least some abilities or unlock some stuff in the blood. Um, 
kind of want to go. I need combat abilities or something because right now, so far, I'm, we're not doing great. I do need a home. You know, that is probably let's let's start there. That's a solid choice. We're going to start looking at we're going to go to real estate office and look for a home. Uh, acquiring property as a canine isn't easy. Some nights you think the whole point of the Camarilla is to make sure vampires can buy property. Everything else the Camarilla does, useful and monstrous, falls out of the need to make sure everyone has a roof overhead. Still, you can't live in the modified modified office of a parking garage forever. You've struggled to master the, your dark gifts on the road, but the truth is that you need a secure, comfortable haven if you're ever going to unlock ever to unlock the deeper secrets of your art. Of your arts. Further, moving house. Further, moving house should reduce the SI's ability to track you, at least for a little while. After asking around, you learn that any real estate purchased by vampires goes through Prince Letal. Of course it does. He owns a place called Madrigal Real Estate, which handles the needs of people like you. The middle-aged native woman who runs the place, Anna, explains the situation. The problem isn't just that you can't head down to the real estate office at 3 in the afternoon. Your legal identity is cobbled together fiction that is always changing its shape to avoid scrutiny. You could use your ID to buy some for loco, and it's enough to let you own a car, but property? I can show you some excellent places with excellent ways to escape into the sewers in the event of an emergency, but will require a substantial upfront payment. That's how we handle the legal hurdles. We don't want anyone investigating your identity and wondering why your age ages don't match up, understand? You nod. It's obvious Prince Letal is getting his beak wet here, but in exchange, he's providing you with some degree of security if you're investigated. <laughs> don't buy Four Loco, but Four Loco's so good! It's not really at all. Um, well then, let's see what we can do for you, Anna says. Despite, despite her apparent good cheer, she watches you keenly. Your status with the Camarilla, you suspect, will determine how generous she can be with all her offerings. Um, so I can look at a bungalow, a two-bedroom apartment, a penthouse apartment, the mission, or I can just leave. I'm... I mean, do we need, I, we don't need a penthouse apartment. That's not, that's not us. I kind, I like the idea of a bungalow only because a two bedroom apartment means that, uh, uh, moon moon might have some trouble coming and going. Um, and the, I'm not sure what the mission is exactly. I mean, I'm sure we'll find out, but I'm not positive. So there's always that. Oh, as a reminder, um, we are still, ah, hey, look at that. I don't know how to do it. Extra life. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we're on top of it. Uh, so we're still raising money for charity. If you want to go over to uh, that link there, you can give money to Riley Children's Hospital through Extra Life. Uh, I have a goal of $500, and I'm not quite there. I'd be happy to get some help. There's some stuff you can buy to help out our games. Um and everything you donate goes straight to Riley, so that'd be great. Forget carbonation and go to straight to Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. I, okay, sure, sure. I mean that's. Um, I'm gonna go with the bungalow. I think, unless you guys really uh, disagree with my choice, which I don't think you do. So here we go. Bungalow. Yeah. Oh, it's that's not so freaking bad. That was concerning. <laughs> um You drive Anna south to Drexel Heights, where she explains this the many excellent facilities this house offers, such as ready access to hunting grounds for when you move up in in the world, dear. Windows that lock from the inside. Instead of from the outside? Where where else would they Oh, is it Mogan David? No, it's Mad Dog. It's Mad Dog 2020. I'm positive. I'm really not. I have no idea. Um, and a rare basement crawl space for emergencies. The one-bedroom adobe building is small and ugly, but the material is sound and you have clear line of sight to your neighbors. There's no garage for your BMW, but you can roll right from the kitchen to where you park your car. 
and the, those reinforced windows are a nice touch. The bungalow would make a fine haven that would let you advance your dark gifts to them to their to the immediate le intermediate levels. Um, I'm gonna Duke. No, come here. Come say hi. Come say hi to everyone. Say, look right there. No, up. You don't like the light, do you? It's too bright, isn't it? I'm sorry, buddy. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. I'm a fuzzy cat. Say, I'm a fuzzy cat. I love you all. He is so pretty. Pretty jerky. Now he's going to bite me. I can already feel it. It's coming. Are you going to bite me? Uh, yeah, I like the bungalow. Um, I want to check out the mission real quick just to get an idea what it looks like. Because I'm curious. Um, Anna smiles and says it's a fixer-upper. There's a song about that. What is it in? He's a bit of a fixer-upper. It's a bit of a fixer. I don't know. I have it stuck in my... Oh, is it from Hercules? Frozen. Oh, really? Wow. I'm... That's... Thanks, Amanda, for the information. Now I feel really dumb that I had no idea it was from Frozen. That's great. It's okay. It's a short, straight drive south through a rundown sub suburban neighborhood. Uh, you're just wondering where... <laughs> someone could have stuck a Spanish mission among all the thrift stores and nail salons when you spot a mountain in the distance. And it tells you to turn off and there right be behind a highway sign advertising Chinese food is the ruin. Uh, it's a glorious ruin come crumbling white Adobe black against the sky. It's once some once symmetrical, Structure now marred by decay and aborted repair attempts and has already given you the history, but you're more impressed by the aesthetics of the place. Several groups tried to fund repairs to the 20th century. And it says, as you park the BMW, uh, and in the eighties, a businessman attempted to turn it into a private home after his death, it languished, but the updates are still intact. You get past the secure, the security barrier, walk through a maze of pitch black corridors illuminated by, only by Anna's phone, and suddenly find yourself in a small but tastefully appointed apartment suite. The building is a bit antiquated but not gaudy, and the rest of the mission stretches off in every direction. More importantly, this place is a maze. You could probably couldn't find yourself your way back to the main entrance before dawn, and you doubt anyone but Anna and perhaps Prince Latau know the way. This is the most secure and most magnificent of havens. Whoa, it's hot chihuahuas. <laughs> You're surprised Prince Tao didn't snatch it up himself. Still, all this magnificent magnificence comes at a price. That includes the deed as well as the bare minimum of necessity, necessary repairs to get the place up to code. But if you can afford it, the entire state is yours. I did look at the mission. This is the mission. That's a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money. Um, that's enough money that makes Matt feel a little upset. I'm going with a bungalow. That's a freaking load of money. <laughs> what? Oh? Is it magic? You know? Yeah, I'm going to go with the bungalow. I can't. Yeah. After some haggling, you agree to purchase the Drexel Heights bungalow. There's almost no paperwork on your part. You just hand over an envelope full of cash, and Anna just ha hands you a shoebox full of locks and keys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, used to help people with nuns mission, yeah. <laughs> like Julian, Anna is particularly interested in your security plans. You got your sliding walls, of course. Your hired assassins trained from birth in the arts of quiet murder. Your poisonous poison gas bombs, your runes of death, of course, like Knowles used to fa to use to favor, and of course there's mechanical locks, locks and electronic locks. 
You let her ramble because you know that you'll have to secure your new place in any other place you move into. You move in that night and secure your haven. You'll furnish it over the next week or two so that it looks like real humans live there. Uh, but right now you have a place to stay, place where you can develop your supernatural gifts in peace. Um, so I took care of the first one. Really, we've already done the, the real estate. Uh, I want to I hone my physical abilities. That's what we're doing. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what... I've got 10 XP. Um... So, oh, 10 XP, that's a lot. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, but like my strength and dex keep coming up in things and it's not helping that we don't have them. But it's six XP, that's a lot. And I don't wanna I don't wanna spend that much, I don't think. Well you could yeah, you have to or you're kinda dead. Um, like literally. I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna skip it and then I wanna go to the My mentals are pretty good. I wanna look at unlocking further secrets of the blood. Cause some of the stuff we could have just gotten past if we didn't have to. Oh, I can learn blood sorcery. That's gross. Kind of want Protean. The third dot of it. Yeah. Yep, we're going to go with Protean. <laughs> um... Oh, we have to secure a well appoint a secure and well appointed haven before we can master that level of protean. That's interesting, huh? It's an interesting gap that they put there. Let's see what Auspex offers. The uh, Auspex enhances a vampire's senses. With it, you will be able to peer into the shadows and hear faraway sounds. Your acuity will increase, allowing you to read moods. And at higher levels, develop an almost telepathic understanding of others. Yeah, I bought a haven, but it's it's good enough to get to the second dot, but not the third. I have to have a very nice place to get to the third dot, is what it's basically telling me. I'm going to go with Blood Sorcery just to get an idea. Yeah, I'm thinking the mission or like the penthouse, maybe the two bedroom apartment, but likely the mission or the penthouse. Uh, the, ant the antique steamer trunk full of grimoires is intimidating, but you pop the latch and investigate the contents. The books are covered in heavy paper, not leather, not human flesh, and full of close set writing in Latin or Greek with the occasional diagram that resembles a geometric or geometry puzzle. Your life as a courier has not prepared you for the classic liberal arts education, but when you check the syllabus, you realize how carefully NVIDIA Call has planned this program. And Call's program is not built for the for enlightenment, but th deep theoretical understandings, or deep theoretical understandings, but for fast power. Yeah, that we chose not to get because lots of money. So basically, I think what they're trying to do, as I'm guessing, is keep us from leveling something too far too quickly without expending things to do it. it. This is, I mean, the whole game is really resource management. Um, so I could get blood sorcery. Um, It'll be Path of Blood. Path of Blood is not great, honestly, but that doesn't mean... Yeah. Um... 
I'm going to get the second dot of animalism. And then I'm going to go somewhere else. And then I'm going to look at my mental stuff. Yeah, my wits is low. My clan clandestine is going to be really important. We have we have had trouble with clandestine being a thing that we can do a lot, and I'm just not any good at it. So I would like to. I'm going to go ahead and up that. And actually, kind of want to up it again. I'm going to up my technology again, because technology tends to be my strong suit. I get three more XP. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna max our technology, because that way, the thing I'm good at, I'm really freaking good at. And then I'm going to go to the pawn shop. Uh, I'm going to spend some money and get some blood. And then I'm going to go to the pawn shop. <laughs> you tune the BMW's radio to hear the news. This is Melpomene Shin, and you're listening to Mel at Midnight. And now the, the nerd news. Lester Bond of the Santa Fe Institute in uh, Santa Fe recently published his findings on the so-called Desert Stonehenge found in the California desert in the 1970s, pointing to evidence of the tools used in recent dendro chronology dendrochronology results. Professor Bond claims that the work is a Victorian age forgery. The Desert Stonehenge drew uh, Fordians, pseudo-archaeologists, and even Native American rights adv advocates in the 70s, but has subsequently fallen into obscurity as evidence emerged that it was of recent manufacture, but where it came from has not been clear until now. Elizabeth Sneed of the online rebunking uh, service Cahoots claims that Lester Bond is an Archon of the 18th grade controlled by the New World Order. She's here with me now. Cool. The moment you walk in, Alina tosses you a sack of cash. What's this, you ask? I mean, it's $5,000, but you're cutting the money I've made now that I'm your creepy go uh, in your creepy ghost world, Alina says. I'm not sure what thin bloods are exactly, but they're not that tough and they're not very good negotiators. Really? You shrug and pocket the catch. Cash. I could have just bought the freaking mission if I knew I was getting five grand. Uh, I'm getting that intrusion kit. And then I'm going to check out the firearms because I feel like I need a gun. Covenant Pawn Shop has a larger selection of sidearms, a larger selection of sidearms than last time, but a lot of the stuff is junk and the rest is either too low caliber for your line of work or impossible to conceal. You need the perfect quick draw and shoot a vampire gun to meet your criteria. The first is a Springfield Armory XDM. $324, Alina says, handing you the 45 so you can check how it feels. It looked bulky in the case, but it settles e into your hand easily into your hands. Alina watches you ra watches you as you rack the slide and sight down the barrel. This is a great woman, wo weapon, and you can afford it, but you keep looking at the other pistol, the Nighthawk Tactical Custom 1911, a 9mm, not a 45, but it'll knock a vampire over as well as the XDM. When Alina, reluctantly, hands it over, it feels like someone built the Nighthawk just for your hand. The balance, the feel, everything is perfect. <laughs> Three... <laughs> Three thousand six hundred and forty-five. I just bought a bungalow for less than this. Uh, Alina says, and I'll throw in the trigger for free. You can afford the Nighthawk, so how can you afford not to buy the Nighthawk? I mean, that's a solid question, right? If we can afford the Nighthawk, how can we afford not to buy the Nighthawk? 
Uh, do I want to spend thirty six hundred dollars on a freaking gun? I feel like if I'm going to need a weapon, that's the one I want, right? Hmm. That's a lot for it is. It's almost as much as that stupid house. I guess technically, technically, I did just get five thousand dollars. So I'm essentially getting a free gun and another thirteen hundred dollars. So that's what I'm going to use to justify my choice. Elena holds hands you the Nighthawk Tactical, a glossy instruction pamphlet, and two extra magazine at magazines. She makes she also makes sure it sits comfortably under your leather jacket. I'm going to talk to her now. Now that I've given most of her money back to her. Um, let's go out and do something. I have my own ghoul now. We should be able to have a good time. I really think... I feel like that's what I want to do, but I feel like there are too many hunters in this freaking game. What do you guys think? Because this is like, legitimately, I'm not sure what to do. It's very rare that that comes up. Do I go out with Alina or do I just go back to shopping and then probably go on my next mission? My next Jorb. Flirt? Let's, okay, we're going to, of course, duh. What was I thinking? Let's go flirt. Something like what, Alina says, her blue eyes meeting yours over her railway glasses. What are rail, what do railway glasses look like? Railway glasses. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay, super, super circular like hipster glasses. Got it. Um, let's make some money, improve this place and my place for that matter. What do you think we could do? I'm sick of hunting her hunters lurking. Wonder if we can get him back off. When was the last time you went on a date? There it is. There it is. Elena laughs and says, I'm a very busy entrepreneur. You look around at covenant, which is empty. When you look back, Elena has pushed up her glasses up. You're greeted with the sight of your own face in the reflection, but you think the prom broker is smiling and isn't like an OSHA violation <laughs> violation to date your ghoul. Aren't there rules against that? Um, Oh, there we go. There, it, there it is. This is so much. Let's go somewhere fun. I can't exactly take Alina to, out to dinner, but if I play my cards right, we can end up doing everything else. Yeah, I yeah I figured number three was right. You know I'm not uh, gay or whatever, right? Alina says, but she smiles as she heads upstairs to where she keeps her room. Let me clean up, mind the door, and don't let any junkies in. A few minutes later, she's back downstairs looking almost exactly the same. Railway glasses, red leather jacket, except she's wearing a black dress and red pumps. That's not almost exactly the same. She's And she's run a comb through her unruly blonde hair. You look. You better not take me anywhere. There's gonna be trouble. Alina says. I can't run and gun, in. I can't run and my gun is in my purse. I don't. We're non-binary. I have no idea. Um. Let's. Uh. Do we take her to a show? I don't know. I. I. You know. Honestly, let's. Uh. Let's go to show stats and let's go to. I don't think that we have anything. It's going to show us anything. Oh, no, it's under journal. Characters. Julian Sim, Prince Latau, Dove, NVIDIA Call, Putter Muster. There's Elena. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I know that we are... Um, I know that we're not binary, but that's about as much as I remember. I don't remember. I mean, it's been like six weeks ago. I was... I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, what, so do we take her to a show, a restaurant, or do we just go for a drive in her Datsun? I mean, she probably likes food, right? Uh, 
Number two, cool. There's a good Ethiopian restaurant a few minutes away with screens in front of some of the booths. You and Alina get a table for two as she uses the injera to obliterate light, little brightly colored piles of stew. Alina tells you about her early life in Romania. Oh, she's Romanian. All right. She manages to put a positive spin on rural poverty and isolation, describing a few fond memories, illegally fishing in the rivers, exploring old ruins in uh, from the uh, that regime, her first, first visit to an internet cafe, and then the death of her brother, her chance to get to America, the first desperate year trying to keep Covenant, Covenant Pawn Shop open, then a year of re- relative stability. And here we you are now, she says. She finished dinner a half hour ago. You lead her back to uh, back outside to her Dotson. It's a hot night, and she's holding onto her jacket, revealing the uh, Geiger-esque tattoos along her arms and shoulders. So now you eat me, right? She asks in the parking lot. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Number three, tempting, but not tonight. When you, okay, cool. Okay, I can. I mean, we did just feed, so we don't need to eat again. Yeah, I don't want to kiss her without asking. Uh, something about that seems a little not right. Uh, whenever you want, Alina says, her blue eyes wide, her lips slightly parted. Then she shakes her head as if embarrassed by her own reaction and says, you know where I work, Ransom, and I need to get back. People can't let people thinking I've closed up for good. See you around, Ransom. Uh, she hops back in her Dotson and takes off. Where to tonight? All right. So I think I've done just about everything I can. I'm good with the car. Like the car, there's nothing wrong with the BMW. I like it. So I think we're off to pick the thing up. Yeah, I think we go do the parcel. It's off to missions. Chapter four. We were just on like chapter six, so I did these in a different order than they expected. That's cool. Uh, Tucson, Arizona night of November 30th. Sunrise, 7.06 a.m. They are just keeping just barely ahead of us with these dates. You head for Covenant Pawn Shop and tell Elena about Camp Scheffler. You know I'm here on an expired visa, right? Elena says, and then she laughs. Whatever, I'm white. How many Nazis are we going to kill down there? (laughs) She sorts through a display case of Nazi memorabilia before you can answer, collecting enough gear that she can blend in with the local militia groups. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Shit, I'll probably be the only person there who's fine. Does my accent sound German? You hope Alina isn't overconfident. There's no traffic in Tucson that evening as you drive the Viper and drift to a halt outside. Once again, Riga watches you, and once again, a flunky runs up to your car, hands you a a USB on a lanyard, and no lockbox this time. No Prince Latau this time either. I can't flirt with Prince Latau. The flunky also makes sure you have your typewritten sheet of directions and false government ideas. Only deliver to Alina Olive Krona, he says. It's a seven-hour drive to the big nothing on the map between Texas and Chihuahua. Uh, Assuming this information is accurate. That means you can get there in one night and back the next. You check. Yeah, that's because we're definitely not going to spend a week there like we did at the last two places. Uh, you've checked where you can stay on the way. If you're a few shelter, there are a few hotels nearby, but you're going to be heading right out into the desert. You hope you don't have to spend a day wrapped in a body bag or hiding in the Dotson's tidy trunk. Either is bad news, bad for the nerves. Julian calls you somewhere, somewhere outside of Benson. A kill team is coming for Alina Olive Krona. He says details are on the USB. You glance at the USB. Unlike the last two, it's not up in a portable lockbox, but it's definitely encrypted. A kill team. The SI? In that case, why didn't Prince Latau tell you to uh, hurry? 
You're probably wondering why you weren't told to hurry, <laughs> Julian says. I can hear you sighing. That's good. It's good to keep breathing. Anyway, as usual, the ivory tower is acting like a good thing will last forever. Remember that rat's nest of, home, of a mobile home park in Mescal? That's gone, but this is worse. The program at Camp Scheffler ha could fuel half of our people in Texas, but it's run by a greedy idiot. I'm offering you a deal. Of course. Of course he is. Let's take it over, like I wanted to at St. Basil's. You consider what to say. Obviously, Julian just blew your phone's cover so badly that you'll have to get rid of it, but now, you're ta but now that you're talking, you need information. But why aren't I in a hurry? Something about this doesn't add up, and I think it's putting me in danger. So how many SI goons are going to, am I going to have to kill to get out of there? I'm interested, but I need you to tell me more. I don't like going in blind. I don't actually want to run a prison camp for Mexicans where we steal their blood, you know. It sounds like Alina has a good thing going. Why ruin it? Or Ellen. Elon? I don't know. Uh, tell me what you know. I'm going to stop wherever, whatever is happening down there, down at the border. And if Julian wants to give me information on how to do it, fine. Uh, I'm on one or three. I like those two. Uh, I hope you're drinking water. Water is important. Um, so streaming this week, we are not doing anything Thursday night. Uh, there is a small possibility that Friday night I also won't be streaming. Just depends on how holiday stuff goes. Um, and then next Tuesday we will be back, of course, with this. Um, and then next Thursday is Illuminated Page, where we will continue our adventures. I guess really get started with our adventures, mostly, in Shanghai. We did a few things, but we didn't do a ton. Or no. No, I take that back. We, You guys met uh, the guy whose name? Brass. Brady. Um, you really don't want to help Julian? Sure. Um... I'm going to go with one because you're being followed. Julian says they're waiting for a BMW three series with someone matching your description to reach the camp. Then they'll strike when, uh, Elon panics because you know, she'll, because they know she'll panic. You turn Julian's words over in your mind. Oh, one last th thing. The Banu Hakim says you'll need to ditch that phone too. Thanks, Julian. There's a storage place off of, off exit 306, Julian says. Go to unit 43. Passcode is 3847. Drop your phone there. Don't destroy the sim. Then pick up the new one on the shelf. That's the only way you're finishing the job. Okay. He hangs up. You pull into the storage facility and do the phone trick again. The 5x5 storage cube has a brand new flip phone waiting for you, still in its original package. You grab it and get back on the road as quickly as you can. Security is tight around Camp Scheffler. You're followed once you turn off the main road, first by Texas Highway Patrol, then by some kind of Patriot militia group in a Chevy Tahoe flying Gadsden and Blue Lives Matter flags. They only peel off when you reach the outer periphery of the camp, high fences topped with razor wire guarded by men in, ma in face masks and goggles. The face masks look like respirators, and they are all painted the same way, like a great cat, man like a great cat's mandibles. Though everyone seems to have respirators and at least one skull cat logo, weapons and other equipment are heterogeneous and irregular. From their mannerisms, you can detect a mix of competent ex-military, police, security personnel, and untrained fringe militia types. Yeah, I know. I know. I like. I don't understand why Julian's so far up my butt. Like he, it's like he's following me al around and has nothing better to do. Uh, the gate guard looks from your government ID to you, very much non-government BMW, shrugs and waves you around to the parking lot. Uh, yeah, I don't like him either. Throughout history, certain kinds of prisons have served as neutral meeting spaces and feeding grounds for kindred. Insane asylums, concentration camps, and gulags have drawn vampires with the promise of easy blood and relative security. Uh, Olive Krona, shadow director of Camp Scheffler and a member of Clan, Clan Ventru, has hidden this place from regular inspection and allowed it to fester and grow ripe. You roll past open-air holding pens where prisoners sit wrapped in reflective 
plastic blankets, watching the, your BMW with dull, hopeless eyes. Guards patrol with rifles and dogs. Moon Moon sniffs unhappily at some of the dogs. You feel it too. Vitae flows through the veins of some. <coughs> As you finish your circuit and park, you watch some kind of shift change among the shift change among the prisoners. They're being put to work in long, low quonset huts. I'm not sure about that word. Uh, the wind carries the stink of unwashed and unhealthy bodies, and this is autumn. The moment you step out of the car, a tall, dark figure of indeterminate gender in a dark suit approaches you and says, give me the USB. I don't know how I feel about the border. I just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think it's something to remind us that this isn't just uh, something that has happened once. And also to keep in mind that um, the World of Darkness setting is supposed to be the the worst of the worst. It is the darkest timeline, hypothetically. So, like, monsters actually live among us, and humans that do bad things are typically just a pawn in that overall thing. It, they do do it a lot, and I feel like highlighting stuff like this and not shying away from it is kind of important. I don't know if it's... I don't know. Entertainment fodder is one thing. I don't... I don't feel like it's being glorified here. I feel like we're being put into um, into morally, morally questionable situations. And that is part and very, very thickly part of what World of Darkness does or should do, should do to characters. There's a lot of things. So, I mean, when you think about, <laughs> when you think about vampires to, to su survive, they have to manipulate people. It's just... That's and that's the bare basics of survival. Playing a good person in vampire is really freaking hard. It's it's almost impossible and only can you feel good about it when you skip over the majority of what actually happens in the setting. And I just don't think that they're trying to do that here. I think that they're trying to show us that there are things going on and that it is also if anybody's going to exploit the borders, vampires are going to be the ones that do it. So, I don't know. Anyway, back to the story. Unless you guys want to talk about that more, and I'm happy to. I, I, yeah. Um, so, a, tar a tall, dark figure of indeterminate gender in a dark suit approaches you and says, give me the USB. Um, my orders are explicit. I delivered the USB to all of Corona. Good evening. Can I have your name and your position in this organization? Who the fuck are you? Give me one more order and I'm going to shove you through a window and feed you two pounds of broken glass. I like number two. Yeah, okay. Yeah, David and I are on the same page. It's true. Uh, they sneer. I, I'm i Nalei, and I'm the person all of Corona sins when she needs a job done right. Not you. So give me the fucking USB and, and get out of here. Um, my intelligence bad isn't bad. Is good. Intelligence. Hey, look at that. Subterfuge. Um, so I can tell him to back off or I'll make him regret it. This goes to Olive Corona and not to her dog. It's manipulation and intimidation. Yeah, yeah. Is this funky for real? I start by investigating their appearance using what I know of government and Camarilla protocol to see if they're legit. This goon doesn't want a scene. I persuade them into backing down. Why don't you just take me to Olive Corona and we can deliver the USB together? Um, I give them the USB drive, not the USB drive, of course. I stay cool and palm the real one. This deception <laughs> will let me uh, hand Nalay a blank. Uh, this fight isn't worth uh, worth my time. I'm going to go with number two to get an idea who they are. That might at least help, help me start. There we go. Uh, you keep them talking for a few more minutes. A careful an analysis of their mannerism 
reviews a few useful things. They're either a ghoul or a junkie, and given the amount of muscle they carry, they're probably not a junkie. They're not officially part of whatever militia group patrols the camp, but when a few of them pass by, their reaction is deferential. A non-binary person who could command the respect of these militia thugs has to be dangerous. They don't look amenable to any of your social skills, but you can see that they're tired. You might be able to trick them if you're careful. Um, I feel like our composure is pretty decent. Composure. Nope, composure. Composure's good, and I just bought up uh, clandestine, right? Didn't I? Why am I not? Okay, yeah. I just bought up clandestine, so that, that actually is not bad. The This one is not terrible. Manipulation, persuasion, and manipulation, intimidation are terrible. So I would go with three, I think. What do you guys think? Oh, you're absolutely right. I don't know how to read. Subterfuge is still a one. That's still not bad. Uh, my persuasion's a one, but my manipulation is one. So still, I think it's the three. I think this one is the best. I'm going to go with that one. Fine, fine, you say. You hold up your hands in a gesture of surrender, flicking your right wrist, make the swap with your left and hand them the blank USB. Don't yank me around again, you little leech. Nalay says, now follow me. Follow? That wasn't part of the deal. But you can see those masked guards are all, all, all over the place, and they're watching you now. You reluctantly follow. They lead you to a bright red uh, Quonset hut guarded by a man and a woman who are also dressed in dark suits. I'm sorry, Nalay, the woman tells you your escort, but all of Corona can't be disturbed. I have information from Tucson, Nalay says. The woman shifts uncomfortably. I know, but is that you, Nalay? That must be all of Corona. She's inside. Is Ransom there? It doesn't matter. I'll have to wait. It'll have to wait. Just give him, them a place to stay for the night. Tomorrow night, I'll... I'm busy. I have a date from Tucson, Nalay says. I have data from Tucson, Nalay says. But only science, silence answers them. Shit, the flunky mutters. They glance your way, then say... I'll find a place for you to stay, Ransom. Don't wander far. Now to figure out a way to deliver the real USB. You wander ba right back to the BMW. Someone's stuck on a boot on it. Great. It looks like you're staying. That's great. There you are. It's Alina. She's dressed like a Doogie Hauser in Starship Troopers in a long gray trench coat over a suit and tie. She has a lanyard and she tosses you another. I, al I also made sure you have a place to stay, she says. But look... We can't be here forever. I already kind of killed a guy. <laughs> I love Alina. Um, yeah, the, the pronouns are in place. Um, like outside the desert, but I don't think Nazis actually like Slavs. And most of these guys are just good patriotic Americans here to keep the homeland pure and shit. But some of them are real Nazis, so I can't stay forever. Alina leads you to a private trailer complete with shower. Expecting an attack, you procure a water drum for, for your trailer and, and partially empty it. You can store yourself in there if the hunters attack. No one checks the water drums. With Alina's help, you scout the camp in under an hour, at first convinced that the second Inquisition will show up at any minute with, in helicopters and troop transports. The camp is laid out in like an open air prison with temporary Quonset huts serving as separate holding pins for men, women, and children due to overcrowding an overflow pin topped with razor wire holds several hundred more people right up next to the pin is a place called Millicent's, a kind of Rick's cafe American for kindred where the vessels are so plentiful. It's almost free after using your, your ID to pass the security checkpoints. You poke your head inside of Millicent's and not counting and count not just well-heeled Camarilla types, but also Anarchs of all kinds lounging among the dazed looking blood dolls um, among the low couches and glittering lamps that establish a sort of 1920s French Algeria, 1990s Pier 1 store style to the place. You're pretty sure the biker gang is made up 
of your fellow gangrels since there are two wolves among the outlanders. You also spot some creepy looking figures in boiler suit boiler suits that you've heard about but never met. Russian exiles, mostly rabble if the stories you heard are true. Are, are to be believed. You listen in on some of the conversation and learn the names of a few lunatics, sewer rats, and clanless hung anger, angers on that the new, more aristocratic Camarilla wouldn't normally tolerate. Millicent herself is a small, frail, and elderly, a peculiar choice for embrace by most standards. She looks like a librarian from a black and white movie, but it sounds like everyone is welcome to grab a drink at Millicent's. That's incredible. A vampire could get used to living the good life if this is what the Camry is offering. This place is, is a fucking atrocity. I'm going to deal with Camp Scheffler one way or another before I leave. How careful is all of, all of Corona being here? Is this whole place just a massive masquerade breach, or does she run a clean operation? I try to have an eye toward the future, and this place can't be efficient. What ways can I improve it? I'm liking number two or three. Three? Three. Yeah, three sounds good. Millicent glances up when you pass through the security and enter her bar, then returns to her work. Right now, she's taking notes even as a hulking vampire shares a hollow-eyed vessel with a hard-looking bruja in a Soviet captain's uniform. Millicent looks well run. Millicent's looks well run and secure, but God only knows what the rest of the kindred here get up to. The pit outside is a particular mess. It's not mainly masquerade violations as such that you fear, but the pit is such an obvious vector for disease and mortal on mortal violence that it might draw outside attention. And even as you watch, you notice that the Soviet kindred is using a needle to steal blood of what use is blood measured in cubic centimeters. That those look like biomedical samples. Interesting. Maybe you should bring that sort of thing to all of Krona's attention. You head back outside to where Alina is waiting and check the mirror, the mortal guards. They're, they're a truly be bewildering mix. Some are actual police. State police are from nearby munis municipalities. Others give every indication of belonging to the armed forces, from their kit uh, to the way they carry themselves. Others are just fringe military types. Citizen patrols, patriot groups, even bikers loaded up with ammunition and given those cat skull masks. You see in men and women in suits, some of them wearing windbreakers, or lanyards that indicate they're with ICE or Border Patrol, the FBI, or even the ATF. Food at your fingertips, uh, a loyal army of soldiers, and a situation that blends perfectly into the chaos and carnage humans have wrought on one another. Elena, all of Corona, has built her own private paradise here by certain standards. You constantly see Nalay and lesser underlings running back and forth on errands to maintain the place. There's a snacker, sneaker net, uh, data being physically carried from place to place, just like what you do. Data is flowing everywhere here, and it has to be coming from a central source. If you could just get your hands on all that blood traffic data, you know who knows Julian, who knows what Julian and you could do with it. Of course, neither Olive Crono nor Prince Latau would be happy if Julian copied the data and set up his own oasis. What should I do here, Alina? I feed on any of the countless sleeping prisoners in the main pit that that shouldn't be difficult at all i go to miss millicent's and select a vessel that should be as easy as the pit and a little more upscale i need to hunt alina i take the boot off my car i have to be quick and efficient with a few illicit tools so we don't get noticed but it should be only take a minute alina and i look for something to steal i can't let the camaria just feed on these people i have to find a way to free them Julian wants allies to exploit this place. I wait outside and talk to the Anarchs. Four or five. One, two, three, four. I need to hunt. I think we're good on hunting. And my dex clandestine is only a two, I think. I'm going to check and see where we're at hunting-wise. Our hunger is a two. Um, clandestine and dex are only a two. Uh... I don't know what to do here. 
I don't want to hand it over to the Anarchs and, and Julian. I don't know about helping people get free because that means a lot of fighting. Yeah, I could go feed. Yeah, I'll ask Alina. She's already killed a Nazi. That's a good idea. <laughs> this place sucks, Alina says. Go home, but if you can't, I don't know. A scream drifts across the camp. It's suddenly cut off. I'm not saying we do anything heroic, Alina says. I don't believe in any of that shit. But look at all the valuable equipment they've got lying around. Wouldn't be, I don't know, good for our souls if we stole some of it? Oh, I love Alina. So feed, feed, hunt. Uh, take the boot off, which I'm not good at. Uh, steal some stuff. Try and free some people or talk to the Anarchs. Let's see, two or five? Uh, yeah, let's go steal some stuff. Why not? An hour of scouting yields a few possibilities. Your easiest bet uh, is to hit the temporary lockers. Once the new prisoners are stripped of, val of valuables, their equipment is stored in 5x5 five five storage cubes in a fenced-off part of the camp. The cubes are barely guarded, and you just have to keep your composure that close to the guards. If you can do that, you can try op opening cube doors until you find an unlocked one. Rewards will be small, but the risk is minimal. If you're looking for greater and more riskier rewards, you and your retainer can head into the, one of the Quonset huts where the least organized militia groups keep its cash and weapons. You'd have to force one of their force one of their lockers, but you're but they're not too well made and you have your portable crowbar. Is there are do they make crowbars that are not portable? Have I am I missing something? It looks like the militia's have also constructed some office space out of trailers. Some of those offices hold cash and other valuables. You just have to be smart enough to disable the alarms, though that shouldn't be any harder than whacking a locker with a crowbar. <laughs> Finally, if you're looking for some real high-risk, high-reward excitement, you could break into all of Corona's car. Okay, maybe not hers, but there's a private parking lot behind the red tent where all of Krona and several other members of the Camry had kept their rides. If you're clever enough to time the car guard circuits just right, you could get inside and grab whatever valuables are there. Um, so... I'm sorry. We break into the guards' lockers, look for some weapons, money, and more valuables as strength and clandestine. Uh, Elena and I disable the alarms in the trailers and look for things to steal. That's intelligence clandestine. Uh, we keep our wits about us and break into some nice cars. We'll be in a lot of trouble if we mess up, but I bet there's a lot of stuff to steal. That's Whitson and clandestine. It should be easy for Elena and me to lie to the guards watching. Sorry the lot and tell them they need to open one of the cars so we can get our stuff. Manipulation subterfuge. Two or three. Two is actually going to be a way better roll, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, you and your retainer check the trailers and get a feel for the alarm system. The more secure ones have motion sensors and other technology that would take too long to bypass. You avoid those and focus on the ones with simple silent alarms hooked up to the door and the single window. You check the alarm, the alarms make a model, then spend a few hours making sure the alarm system is as primitive as you think it is. And it is. You just didn't, it's just an encrypted radio signal that's transmitted between the sensors. You intercept the signal and use your laptop to figure out what's what it's sending. Then you just spoof the data and con convince the sensor that everything's fine. That was the only hard part. Elena slips inside and returns in moments with several hundred dollars in cash. You got, you're gone in minutes. The next day brings no SI to activity. Thank goodness. After showering, you check the red tent, but it's sealed up tight. Uh, all of Corona is in is deep in negotiations with other branches of the federal and state governments and with private charitable organizations that need cheap labor. Uh, what the hell? Sorry. 
She must know you're here, but between her Malen Malenois, I don't know, and her endless parade of guards, you can't get in. Worse, more and more vehicles seem to be parked around the camp. Too many people, Lena says when she sees you that evening. I'm not an expert on your masquerade ransom, but there's too much going on here to keep track of. She's not wrong. As you make plans for the evening, a hideous Nosferatu in ragged clothes appears. She introduces herself as Lenora, a facilitator among the different Anarch groups that feed in Camp Schaeffler, Scheffler. If you're looking to aid the Anarchs here, she's willing to help. She leaves her contact information, as well as a shoebox full of camp records, as a sign of good faith. There are copies of Olive Corona's contacts in the blood trade. This is exactly the sort of hard data Julian is looking for. Wow, they, the game wants us to really uh, work with Julian. Uh, feed, feed, go and hunt. Uh, take the boot off the car. Look for something else to steal. Free some people or help the Anarchs. Let me go look at my Dex clandestine. Is that what I'm going to do? No, I'm going to look at my hunger. That's what I wanted to do. My hunger has not gone up. Um... Yeah, yeah, there, there is not a... I don't absolutely have to feed. I could, and it wouldn't hurt me. But of the three options, I'd rather go hunt. Um, yeah, I think it does too. We can screw the Camarilla. We can help Julian. I kind of want to screw the Camarilla if I'm going to choose to do any of these. I've already stolen stuff. I don't really need to go down that scary... Uh, or that, that, that risky road again. I feel like um, next to last one where we free people is the best option. It's already pretty freaking bad. Like a bunch of people running around might give us the opportunity to run. She is. She really is. I'm going to go with the free some people. Yeah. You're not sure how you would even begin to going about a trail jailbreak. There must be hundreds of people here, and the relative amateurness, amateurness of the security personnel makes extracting them more difficult, not less. But as you patrol the camp, looking for weakness in the defenses, you see a few opportunities. Several fences are bone vulnerable. Most are electrified, but you might be smart enough to avoid circuits and carefully snip a few vulnerable sections. Alternatively, though you, you still can't get to the, your car, you might be able to borrow a vehicle, move it into position for a fast getaway... You'd have to dodge patrols all night, tiring work requiring total focus, but once it's moved, people might be able to use it to escape. Or, assuming that at least some of the prisoners already know a way out, you could prep them for desert survival. Someone has uh, survival. Someone with survival training could lift supplies from the guards, then leave caches outside to ease their flight. Finally, this is the simplest, though perhaps not the easiest of then easier than any of the others. You can just bribe some guards to look the other way when the time comes. Not all of them are happy about the work, and some street smarts and a roll of 20s might get you further than you than more complicated tricks. Lena and I grab pliers and cut through a section of fence, working intelligently so we don't trigger any alarms. That's intelligence clandestine. It's not a bad roll. I sink into the earth, which will give me a better angle from which to cut through the fence. Protean, sure. I'm going to borrow a car and drive it somewhere place, someplace where people can make a quick getaway from. I'll have to be careful and uh, patient to avoid noses, resolve and drive. It shouldn't be that hard to use my knowledge of the wilderness to pr and prep the escapees for desert survival, uh, intelligence survival. Uh, Elena and I bribe some guards to look the other way. $500 should do it. Sure. Charisma streetwise, which are both terrible. First, I send Moon Moon around to cause a distraction on the far side of the camp. That will buy me some time, and they're too smart to get caught. Animalism. Uh, I like number two, or number one, or uh, number six. I don't even know if I have survival. 
Oh, I have survival. I'm actually good at survival. Yeah, moon moon. So I figured. Okay, cool. Number six. You carefully explain to your Lobo the exact kind of trouble you want them to cause. No mayhem, no wild chases through the trailers, just a weird, a few weird sightings to unnerve security and draw them away. Uh, moon Moon is clever, uh, is a clever servitor and takes off into the shadows to do your bidding. All right. Then I could prep. So my best roles are going to be grabbing suppliers or uh, using my knowledge of the wilderness to prep escapees. I think we grab some pliers. No, okay. Now I'll do the int in survival. There we go. Uh, no, I think I think Moo is safe. Uh, trucks regularly deliver water to the camp, and while the prisoners are locked up and watched, most of the supplies really aren't. You have no difficulty finding military issue packs of food and water. The only tricky part will be scattering them around while people need to use, where people need to use them. Fortunately, you and Julian used to do this sort of thing before you became a courier. You grab as many supplies as you can carry and head out into the desert. It only take it takes you only a few hours to find good spots for supplies away from patrols and you and you hope the gangrel that roam the wilds. These supply caches won't last long, but if you act in the next few nights, people will might have a chance. The next day, you're repeatedly jarred awake by the sound of heavy equipment moving around. Vampires sleep heavy, but your nerves are on edge all day. Every time you think, is this the attack? But nothing happens. Someone bangs savagely on your door just as you're, you get ready to leave. Courier, it, it's in the lay. Get out here. All of Corona wants, wants to see you. You poke your head outside to confront the Ventrue's underling. The sky is still tingling purple with purple in the west. You haven't slept well in days. Meet me at the red tent, they snap. Then they take off. You've been ordered to the red tent, and you feel the eyes on you as you step outside. After a few minutes spent checking possible exits, you enter the red tent for the first time, while Alina waits nervously outside. The guard dog that's always outside the tent takes the lead. You follow the Malinois. I have no idea what that is. Most of it is an office's like you were expecting. Instead, dozens of migrant prisoners, mostly women, are livened up in front of refurbished laptops performing, performing mechanical Turk-style labor. A few with good English skills appear to be phone banking for Texas politicians or Christian charity organizations. It's like, okay, yeah. So, like, what you would expect out of, like, a guard dog-looking military dog thing. Cool. Um, past the security door is a crude facsimile of a government office complete with faux wood paneled walls and deep blue carpet. And there she is. You five find all of Krona in an oversized office seated in an elaborately carved wooden desk in front of a department of Homeland security seal. All of Krona looks like the picture you saw of her. She's tall and gaunt with long blonde hair Arranged in an elaborate braid, she wears a blue-black pantsuit decorated with more silver jewelry than most government workers. Her colorless eyes meet yours. You detect a flicker of distaste and disappointment. Malinois? Okay, cool. Oh, the courier is here, the venture says, as if you haven't been trying to deliver the USB for nights. Tired of waiting, you march past Nalay and slap the USB down on her desk. From Prince Latau, I assume, she says. Before you can answer, she drops beneath her desk, rummaging around, and pulls out a square laptop. She inserts the USB, then starts to read. Nalay's eyes widen at the revelation of what you did, but the retainer says nothing. You wait for her to explode into action when she realizes the Second Inquisition is coming. Her response is disappointing. Say, hmm, the Second Inquisition is coming. All of Krona says, thank you, Latau. Nalay clears their throat and then says, Isn't that uh, a problem, ma'am? An opportunity, Olive Crone says, rubbing the head of her Malinois. The animal elicits no reaction. For, for too long, I've tolerated all kinds of trash that open at this open feeding hole. Now the SI gives me the opportunity to get rid of the Anarchs, the hangers-on, the filth. We will take the data we've gathered here and use it to stake a claim at another holding facility. There are dozens to choose from, and the new one will have will be for Camaria alone. She checks with what Latau wrote again. Yes, this confirms what I know. 
what I've planned for. Nalay, a kill team from the Information Awareness Office at the Pentagon will be here in the morning. Your plans are waiting in your office. Read them now. Leave us. Nalay gets out of here, out of there, leaving you with a very satisfied looking Ventru. At that moment, she is every inch uh, the Ventru, a born ruler, always three steps ahead, always totally in control. She looks up and down, looks you up and down, and hardly bothering to hide her distaste. Uh, she gestures you for you to sit. So you're still here, she says. It looks, uh, if you are looking for more work, I could use you, Ransom. I reward loyalty. Her eyes narrow and her earrings glitter at in the cheap artificial light. I return loyalty. That's what, that's all we kindred have, you know, our bonds with each other. Technically, you've finished your job here and should be able to walk right out, right back out to your car. But before you can say anything, Olive Krona says, Camp Scheffler will, can always use a com competent professional who's not already entangled in local politics. In exchange for helping me with certain matters here, perhaps I could teach you something. This is This might be an opportunity to earn the Camarilla's respect rather than their grudging cooperation. Uh, I like the last one. I've, if you're offering to teach me arts, your arts, I'm interested. I prefer to work in cash. I remain silent. I don't much like what I've seen here, and I'm not getting indebted to Olicrona. Her arts are going to be whatever adventure arts, so like dominate, presence, and fortitude, I think? I don't remember. I'm not. I'm definitely not interested in her. No, I'm not, because I can pick those up any other way. Honestly, I've got enough uh, other vampire stuff, like the blood sorcery is really cool, and then I have the opportunity to pick up Potence and Celerity because we worked with uh, Pattern Muster. Um, so yeah, like, number three, I think, is the way to go. You don't trust me? The Blue Blood says, actually taken aback. My can clan keeps its promises, child. Oh, she called me a child. Don't forget that. If you serve me well, I'm willing to share my clan's secrets of mental command and near invincibility. I already have near invincibility. I'm a freaking gangrel. And of course, she settles her hand on the head of the Malinois. Uh, I have animalism and fortitude already available to me. Dominate and presence are not that big of a deal. I'm not a mental or social character. I guess I am a mental character. <laughs> you hate vampires. But tell me, if you don't want to enter into an alliance, why are you here? That's a good question, and one that might not deserve an honest answer. Can I just scream dollar, 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 dollar to bills, y'all, and then walk out? Like, that sounds like a great idea. I'll be straightforward if cautious. I'm here to help the Camarilla. I'm impressed with what you've done here. Not that one. I need to start transferring data and power from all of Corona to me and Julian. I choose my words carefully. My real goal is freeing the prisoners. I consider what I should say. Ooh, it's not the first one. Number three? Cool. That's, yeah, okay, sure. This operation is really incredible. I'll stay on my best behavior and throw some de deceptive comments her compliments her way. That's the easiest route. This place is a damn abattoir. It's a disgrace for any vampire to live in this filth. I need to threaten her to catch her off guard. Charisma intimidation. Throw that out. Uh, the Anarchs are drawing attention you don't want. I know how to deal with the street criminals. I offer my ser services. Intelligence and lower of streetwise and subterfuge. Your underlings are crooked and stealing blood. I pretend to offer my services... Uh, as a shrewd auditor and investigator, though I can, I really just want financial data. Data that's intelligence plus the lower of investigation and subterfuge. I try and stay uh, neutral and analytical, uh, carefully gauging her mood. So this place is an abattoir. Uh, I have some problems with that. Wits and lower of awareness and subterfuge. My wits is trash. My charisma is definitely trash. I'm pretty sure my wits is trash. My wits is trash. Um, subterfuge, streetwise, investigation, and awareness. 
subterfuge. Streetwise. Investigation. And awareness. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So, as far as these stats go, um, the number five is going to be a two. Number two is going to be like a one. Uh, number three and four are both going to be a five. So I think three or four, as far as stats go, are going to be our best option. Tell, tell her I don't want none. Um, so I either deal with the Anarchs or I audit her blood stuff to get financial data, which I kind of, that one's, I guess, the one I want. Three is the best. All right. I, yeah, I guess they are drawing attention, and that's a problem, too. I'm going to go three, because it's going to hypothetically protect the masquerade. She looks you up and down and then says, well, you are convincingly unsavory. Oh, jeez. You explain how you can monitor the criminal anarchs that use this watering hole, especially the Walkavians and the scummy disorganized clan lists that lurk on the fringes and make sure that they won't cause trouble during the move. She's interested, if a little skeptical. I would actually be interested in more thorough investigation of the Anarch, she says. An investigation might be prudent. Nonetheless, all of that will have to wait. I can come out of this attack stronger than I was, but the situation is still dangerous. You should stay out of sight until I'm ready. Sure. All of Corona's complacency is alarming, but also strangely convincing. She has the supernatural charisma of Clan Ventru, subtly influ or has the supernatural charisma of Clan Ventru subtly influenced your reaction? No, certainly not. <laughs> so that probably means yes. You stand up, confident that you can rescue people before it's too late. The Malinois escorts you out, then freezes and finally reacts to something snarling at the man in the corner. You're a hard woman to find, Alina. I can't believe you made me leave my gamer chair. You turn to the familiar voice. Julian Sim stands in the doorway. Super duper helpful. Yeah, she thinks I'm unsavory. The Ventru racks her brains for a moment, then says, The water boy? Julian Sim, the Banu Hakim, says he's wearing a Junji Ito hoodie and a sly grin. Uh, Alina waits a beat. You realize she's waiting for her retainer to, to swarm Julian, but they don't come. She reacts graciously to that revelation, gesturing for her guard to stand her dog to stand down. What do you want, boy? She asks the Asamite. I want you to stop overestimating your chances, Julian says. He tosses a plastic folder full of photographs and documents on Alina, all of Corona's desk. Her eyes widen as she sorts through them. The IAO kill team is going to smash you to paste and then light the paste on fire, Julian says. Um, you don't have time to pack up everything in neat little boxes. Get out now. But my, yes, all your hard work, very sad. Run, run a tighter ship next time. How dare you, fledgling, all of Corona snaps. The Malinois snarls and your lobo whines. That's doctor fledgling to you, GS10, Julian says. What's your degree in? I don't know, lots of things. The point is, I'm offering my services to expedite your evacuation. OCR scanners? Encryption? All of Corona asks. No. Then what? I drove here in a fan, van full of librarians from the U.S. The University of Arizona. All of Corona's eyes dart from you to Julian and back to you. Ransom, keep an eye on Sim while I while his librarians help me pack. Yeah, I know. I know. Fuck Julian. I know. The moment you're out of all of Corona's earshot in the fast emptying main room of the red tent... Julian takes you by the elbow and says, you're not trying some insane rescue plan, are you? You don't get it. Don't you get it, Ransom? This place doesn't exist because canines willed it into existence. It exists because this is what humans do to each other. You can't fix it. You can only shape it. I'm here to shape what comes next. Alina 
has her Glock held low in the doorway, aiming it at Julian's spine. God, I love her. You signal for her to put it away. No, I don't. No, shoot him. His hand lingers for longer than it should have. Maybe you shake the thought away. You have to plan to make. You have plans to make. At least one of all of Corona's retainers are watching Julian at all times, so Julian can't actually fight you if you defy him. Defy him. Man, we're just picking up all the best people. Moon Moon is great. Uh, Alina's great. Julian is hot trash. And so is kind of Prince Letal. Let's just be honest. Get your fucking hands off me, Julian. This place is a horror show. If this is what you, we need to survive, then we don't deserve to survive. I'm shutting this place down for good. You're no better than the Camarilla if you think this is okay. I'm not helping you with this. If Julian thinks this is my best chance of surviving and thriving, maybe I should listen to him. Fine. I'll make sure you get what you want. Uh, I really do like the idea of complicating, duplicating this place with me and Julian in charge instead of the Camarilla. Okay, I'll get you what you want. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh... I'm going to go with two... I have to say him with that sassy attitude. I I don't have a sassy attitude. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I know. It is. He, they are pretty sassy. Uh, Julian just shakes his head. You're making a mistake, Ransom. We're young and allowed to make mistakes, but not forever. He signals his librarians and starts grabbing whatever he can get his hands on. Now you're going to work while Julian stools ever, steals everything he can. You step outside the red tent. The evacuation is really kicking off. With all of Corona coordinating her underlings and Julian pretending to help her while stealing as much as he can. Among Elena's many skills, of course, is inventory. She'll be useful here. You consider how you can help or help, as the case may be. All of Corona keeps a lot of files and equipment on lockdown in the red tent. What is she hiding in there? If you can keep your wits about you, you could use the distraction to break into her secure area and see what's back there. Your Nosferatu contact, Lenora, could help you organize the An Anarchs to load up supplies, which would take leadership skills and attention to detail, mostly to make sure they didn't steal too much. You could steal whoop, 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 whoop. you could steal a vehicle to load the prisoners on amid the chaos. That might help your getaway, though you'd need patience and steely resolve to drive it to a safe spot. You're smart. If you're smart and technically inclined enough, extensive computer data is waiting to be transferred out. The equivalent physical data, boxes of files, folders, maps, and uh, mimeographs, would require an equal degree of intelligence as well as a good understanding of academic research technique in order to grab the most value material. All of Corona's operation is already a mess. Whether digital or physical, someone had, with a keen eye or for detail might just be able to hang around and spot everything that gets dropped, misplaced, or misfiled. There's a lot of equipment to move, and the cat mask guards aren't helping. Why would they? This is vampire business, and most of them don't understand what's happening. But you could ask all of Corona for money and pass some of her cash around to get the guards working for you. While the Russian Bruja would have would have to be persuaded to help, their tent is right next to all of Kronos. If you could convince them to help with the evacuation instead of just fleeing, they might be useful. Finally, you could feed in the chaos. Now is an ideal time, in fact. Whatever you do, you can't let this data get caught out in the open. If SI hits you before it's packed, it'll be a significant breach of the mask raid. Uh, let's go look at my resolve, because I don't remember what it is. My resolve's good. My leadership is not. Oh, so many things we can do. Resolve and leadership is okay. My resolve of drive is okay. My intelligence and technology is pretty good. Uh, my resolve academics is pretty okay. What's clandestine is kind of bad. Charisma street is kind of bad. Uh, my charisma persuasion is kind of bad. Uh, intelligence investigation is pretty okay. Um, so I like this one because it's going to help protect the masquerade. Um, I 
Yeah, I, I'm going to go with that one because it's going to help protect the masquerade, and I have a feeling we're going to make more than one choice. This camp was already too large uh, and complex for all of Corona to keep everything nailed down, and now there's now that it's in motion, the situation is rapidly approaching abject chaos. There's theft, loss, confusion, misallocation, and more theft. Also Malkavians, which, honestly, that's like every story I've ever been in in LARP is all these bad things are happening and also the Malkavians are just stirring shit because that's what they do sometimes. Uh, fortunately, you and Nalei are able to stand at the edge of the parking lot with Alina and watch the loading and unloading. Whenever something goes wrong, you're able to signal someone to set it right. You spot all kinds of screw-ups screw and corruption. You can't be everywhere at once and you're sure that it's just as messy as elsewhere, but you're able to make sure that the parking lot vehicle parking lot's vehicle loading operations run smoothly. You and Alina return to the red tent just as Julian and all of Corona finish emptying out the government offices. They're arguing in acrimonious and frightening tones, although nothing has rolled out, almost nothing has rolled out, and the camp is in chaos. Nalay pushes their way through the crowds to speak to all of Corona. They're limping. Two of their fellow retainers are helping a third get out of the get out her ballistic vest. You can she see she's been shot twice. Carefully listening or listening carefully, you can hear Nalay say all around, around the camp already. They'll be here in less than an hour. And Julian holds up his hands, hand for Delay to be silent. The Banu Hakim cocks his head and listens. The retainer shakes his, their head, but you hear what all of Corona and Julian say. The faint drone, hear the faint drone of helicopters. You're almost out of time. Um, We'll do that in, in technology. With the threat of the Second Inquisition in, every, in, in the minds of every kindred, there's less computer data to pack up than there would have been 10 years ago. The problem is that organization has suffered. You and Alina find yourselves a closet full of laptops, thumb drives, and external hard drives, none of them labeled or organized, and without a tech specialist in charge of, that, of sorting through them. Fortunately, all of Corona's missing tech person left a readme file on most of the computers that includes the physical location of important files and careful instructions about how to keep the information off the internet. Nowadays, laptops just love connecting to the internet, so you follow the instructions to the letter, transfer everything to a single external hard drive, and leave with your wallet size prize. You peer into the back of your BMW, surprised that it's full of equipment. Julian spots you looking at it and says, key data on this doomed operation. Don't throw it away, we're both going to need it. You appear to have inherited a whole file cabinet and several old-style CPUs. Elsewhere, the evacuation is proceeding smoothly, or at least it is until prisoners suddenly swarm out of their holding cells. All of Corona and Julian both see what's happening, and with the bloodless calculation of vampires with too much to worry about, they go back to packing. It's time to roll, all of Corona says, tells Nilay. The retainer nods and gets all of Corona and the Malinois in her jeep. Julian sighs. You don't think he was able to steal much from the blue la blue bloods, and hops into the spr into his sprinter van. Prisoners are escaping in every direction, in whatever and in whatever way they can. You watch the chaos for a second, but then an F one fifty behind you lays on its horn and flashes its light, like you're not rolling forward fast enough in the Burger King drive through. The convoy is moving. You scratch Moon Moon's ears and roll through the main gate. Julian used to say, when a plan went perfectly, everything was boring. He only said that about his StarCraft games, but it applies to, in real life, too. There's some action behind you, and a helicopter screams overhead ten minutes up the road, but if the Information Awareness Office or whoever authorized this op expected a pitched battle, they should have struck earlier. You're gone. Since dawn is so near, the convoy starts to break up a half hour outside the camp. You find a location taped to your sun visor. Five minutes more, five more minutes of driving, you're just starting to feel the nervousness as the eastern sky, sky lights lightens, and you turn onto a uh, dirt road and arrive at an abandoned wildlife conservation facility, boarded up but so far from any major highways that graffiti has barely touched it. You and Moon Moon check inside. The windows are covered, and no light can get inside. This will do. You head into the abandoned building with Moon Moon to rest. 
You get back on the road the moment the sun sets. You keep off the major highways. The radio is full of wildly incoherent chatter about an invasion of Mexicans and the federal, federal agencies trying to round them up. You reach Tucson before midnight. Hey, we got a we got an achievement for liberating the prisoners. Fantastic. You listen to a few more radio and television reports. First, you learn that a storage facility off of 306 was raided around dawn. Interesting. And from the confused radio reports, it also sounds like dozens of prisoners managed to escape in the chaos of the evacuation. They won't all make it, you know, but now they have a chance. They're not prisoners of the government Yeah, screw over Julian and do good motto from here on out. That that's fine. I'm good with that. Um, they won't make it. You, they won't all make it, you know. But they have a good chance. They're not prisoners of the government. Food for the Camarilla or potentially potential infected for the Information Awareness Office to exterminate in mass. A few lives are slightly better tonight because of you. You take the information that was loaded into your BMW and destroy everything to make sure those people stay free. Next, you head to the Viper. All of Krona is already there, discussing everything that happened at Camp Scheffler with the Eagle Prince. They're both dressed in formal wear as if heading to the symphony. She seems to be taking the loss of her little oasis well. As kindred age, they learn to plan for the long term, and any Inquisition attack one survives is an Inquisition attack one can rebuild from. Ah, Ransom, Latow says when he sees you. It's good to see you in one piece after the SI got through with Camp Scheffler. My, Alexand my man Alexander has prepared a room where you can type up what happened. Ugh, why would I want to do reports? Latow's ghoul, Alexander, leads you to a room with an old-fashioned typewriter. When the ghoul scans your work, he says, I doubt Prince Latow will be entirely satisfied since the Camarilla won't be able to rebuild. On the other hand, you were only tasked with delivering a message. Let's hope that we can find a way to make up for the loss of blood traffic. Alexander hands you your money. You head back to your BMW and make sure the money adds up. You can't help but notice a little bonus indu inducement as you count your earnings from Camp Scheffler job. It looks like pleasing the Camarilla is, rewarding with, is rewarded with straight cash. You head to your bungalow and park your BMW. After a day of fitful dreams, you throw on your leather jacket and engineering boots and get ready for the for another night. You step outside to check your BMW. A neighbor parks next door in her Super Duty or Ford Super Duty and gives you a friendly wave. You've been practicing this. You're ready. Howdy, neighbor. Howdy. She responds before heading inside. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> You're one of them. Sorry, that one caught me a little much. Then a metallic-hued sports car rolls into the parking lot, drawing everyone's attention. Don't park here, damn it, you think. Then Julian Sim parks his Fisker Karma next to your BMW, gets out of the sports car, and looks around. Fucking nailed it. Oh, Chapter 7. We're actually going to stop here, because we're pretty close to uh, time anyway. I don't want to get into the next chapter right away. I feel like we've got a lot coming up still. I wish there was a way to check any kind of progress on this. Um, but whatever. Yeah, fucking Julian. Uh, so we're having, we're chapter seven. Like, I feel like we're doing pretty good. We've, uh, we've done the three things and now we're kind of unsure what's going to happen next, but that's cool. Uh, Thursday will be a rebroadcast of uh, Growing Shadows from Sunday uh, because they, we did it early. Because, you know, Turkey. Uh, Friday, I may or may not be playing. I'm gonna, I'll, we'll let you know. Um, what happens if I click the menu? Oh, it's, it's this. Oh, what? It's just, yeah, it's just the, uh, that's, that's new. That is a new thing. Interesting. Um, so we'll be back. We'll be on Thursday rebroadcasting what we played on Sunday. Come check that out. If you haven't checked out, uh, growing shadows, it's pretty good. Um, I might be on a Friday. It's, it depends on how things go here at the house. We just have to, I can change the background color. Actually, 
Actually, sepia is going to be better on my eyes anyway. Oh, it's already sepia. Well, that transition was something. What's the white background look like? And sepia. Oh, we were already on sepia. Kind of like the black background, not going to lie. So that's what we're going to go with. Return to the game. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Um, Next Tuesday, we'll be back with this. A uh, week from Thursday, uh, we'll be back with Illuminated Page while we're in Shanghai. We'll see how badly this goes for everybody. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, hope you had fun. And uh, we will be uh, we'll be back uh, live Friday or Tuesday. We'll see. Uh, thanks, everybody. Bye.